I'm Diana Lassier, All Water Rowing Coach and the Sales Manager for the Oarboard Rower. I'm Adam Creek, Executive Business Coach, Olympic Champion, three-time World Champion in the sport of rowing and Oarboard Ambassador Coach. Today, Adam and I are going to go over details of the Adventure Row 16 combo packages, which are available as a single position or a double position rowing boat or a stand-up paddleboard setups. This is the world's only inflatable double or single person rowing boat and also a double or single stand-up paddleboard. Thank you, Adam. Just on your pumps, you've got an input and output. So make sure you've got it on the right side. Okay, we've got the hose on. You've got an option of your single action and double action. The single action is only producing air, pumping air out on your way down. The double action is producing air on your way up and your way down. So I like to keep it on the double action. For the beginning, it's going to go a little faster to about 10 PSI. For the last 5 PSI, I flip it over to single action. This is a little bit easier because then when it's such a high pressure, it's harder pulling it up and down. And then we've got attaching our hose to the inflatable board. It shows you right on here, your 15 PSI is what you're going to pump it up to. Pushing it down releases the air out. So you want to make sure you twist it and have it up as you put the air in. See that valve there? Down lets the air out. It locks in place there when you're taking the air out. And you want to put it back up and keep it there while you're putting the air back in. Make sure you have your hose attached before you put your pump on. I've seen people do it the opposite way and you just lose your air. Twist that and lock it in place really well. See if you look there, you've got to catch that under those two bars there. So just line it up inside and make sure you're catching in there, pushing on lots of pressure and twist it in. And then you've got your gauge on here. A lot of people don't realize, but it doesn't actually start showing anything on the gauge until the board is fully inflated up. And then once it's fully inflated, it looks exactly as what you think would be good enough. Then you're going to start showing pressure. Then you're going to pump it to 15 PSI, which seems shocking to a lot of people. I get a lot of phone calls thinking the pump isn't working, but really it just isn't registering until it's fully pressured in size. It looks good, but you wouldn't believe how much harder it's actually going to row and feel once you get it right to 15 PSI. And the 16 takes about 15 minutes to pump up. Penny, if you're going, you can hear that, it's working on both ways. Okay, so we've got it fully inflated to 15 PSI. That last five PSI, the needle goes a little faster, but it's a little bit more work to get it to there. So you can see how it's reading the gauge is a little bit above 15. It's the smaller PSI numbers on the inside, not the outside numbers. Got it fully pumped up, detach your hose from this end always. First, you're going to leave your valve up so it's locked in position holding the air in. And then you have your cap that has the two pieces that wrap under the bar just like the end of the pump. So lock that on and you're ready to go. This is our new lithium battery portable pump. I really like it because you can just take it down to the beach with you and actually pump it up while you're getting your other gear and everything ready. It does come with all of the attachments to charge it and to do it with your battery and your vehicle if you need to as well but it holds charge for about three boards in the meantime to do on the beach without any electricity required. So you just attach that the same as you do with the hose to your manual pump. And the other end comes with a universal fitting for your inflatable, same as the manual pump as well. Just hook those under the two bars there. Twist that in, make sure it's locked in place. You can look here. You pick your PSI, there's 12, 16, 20. I've gone to the 16. It'll go just a little bit over, our board is fine. And then once you're at your right setting, just hit power again. Attaching the fin is quite simple. As you'll see, there's a little fin nut and bolt at the end of the fin. The first step is simply to unscrew the fin nut and bolt. You then put the square uh, nut back on the fin pin, stick it into the fin box, slide the pin and, and pin nut and unscrew and take out the fin pin. You'll notice there's two little uh, metal dowels on the edge of the, of the fin. You stick those dowels into the fin box, push the fin back and where this little hole is for the fin pin, line it up with the square nut, stick the fin pin in, and screw it 
as tight as your fingers can make it. Your fin is now set up and ready to go. Some of our ore boarders prefer to get the flex fin. The flex fin is a bit smaller and much more flexible. Oreboard users appreciate this if they're beaching their boat or if they're rowing in very shallow water on a regular basis. Here at Oreboard, we recommend having a fin on your boat at all times. Whether it's the longer, uh, stiffer fin for bigger waves and bigger wind conditions and deeper water, or the smaller flexi fin uh, for calmer conditions and shallower water and frequent beaching. The fin helps out in a number of different ways. When there's wind, waves, and currents, it helps the boat track straight, it keeps you safe, and allows you to get the direction you want to go in a quicker, safer manner. Uh, also, when you're learning how to row, the fin is essential. The fin helps you learn how to put pressures on the blade properly and keep the boat moving in the direction you want it to go. When you're transporting the 16-foot paddleboard down to the beach by yourself, it's easiest just to carry it down in a few pieces. So take the board down to the water first, then I go up and get my oar board and my oars. Okay, so Adam's giving me the oar board here. We're going to set up the 16-foot adventure row board. We set it right over the handle, which is actually your lifting point. It's a nice balancing point for when you're lifting up the board as I was carrying it earlier. You want your oar board over top of that handle, and then you want the first D-ring in line with the oar board insert spots there. Okay, so you've got your two buckles. You want to take them, you can see it's kind of loose like that. You want it flipped over itself up back against the material. So actually here it click, and it's back against the material here. So that's going to lay flat in the middle of the oar board where there's actually a little, little extra padding there for keeping that buckle in place. So you're going to first go through the oar board. Over top of your D-ring back in through the oar board. So you're going under that buckle, back through the oar board, through your D-ring on that side, and back into the oar board again. Just make sure you've got no twists in it there. Okay, so now you've got your two bars facing against the buckle, materials flat against there. You're going to bring your end closest to the buckle under the second bar pulling it tight through i center it actually a little off center with the buckle because once you flip it over it's going to be centered so you want to hold it tight and you're going to feed it back through the middle pulling it away from you so now you've got the blue lines there just give it another look again make sure you got a little bit on even on each side centering your board everything's thought out for you so you don't have to figure anything out aside from just following the lines there holding a little bit of pressure and putting that buckle over till it's actually hard to push them, your hand weight to push it down and clamp it in place. And your extra end, you can just tuck through like that. Let's talk about undoing these buckles, then we'll talk about the deck rings. To undo the buckles, it's less like Diane is doing, grab onto the strap and pull back. This avoids getting your fingers caught in the metal buckle if you just use the buckle. As you can see with the nine different sets of deck rings, you can position uh, the single oar board in many different places. You can load up the tail of the boat with gear and, then, and position the oar board unit here. You can move it back into the position we were before, or if you want to load up the nose of the boat, you can pick the right position and move it into a couple of different places further up the tail of the SUP. The Oarboard 16 Adventure Row combo comes with all the oar bags and the Oarboard kit bags as wheelie bags included. So each one comes with the oar bag. It's a great setup, it comes inside. All the pockets needed when you have your two part oars in separate pieces. So you have your two handles at the back, pieces here separated, and then the two blade pieces here. And that way nothing's getting scratched up. You can even fit your SUP paddle in there as well. The Travi wheel Travel Wheelie Bag is great. Handles on each end, handles on top. You can carry it however you like. Cruise around with it anywhere. Um, I've traveled a lot with it as checked luggage on flights. This usually goes in as an oversized bag, but it's pretty neat to be able to take a flight anywhere in the world and have your oarboard along with you. 
People often ask us if only one person can row the oar board when we have the two uh, positions set up on the board and the answer is yes. This rarely ever happens but sometimes when you're transporting the board uh, you might need to row with both positions set up one person. The easiest way to do this is to get the oars and take the handles and uh, put them underneath the bungee units and then the single rower can sit in the uh, front position and row the boat where it needs to go. Another great feature of the board is the rugged uh, nature of the rubber material it's made out of. Compared to a fiberglass board, uh, this, this unit can deal with a heck of a lot of damage. You can bang into rocks, you can bang into sticks, and <laughs> Uh, the skin just bounces back. It's very rugged, it's made to be used, and it's made to last a very long time. People always ask if you can purchase it as a single and then add the second oar board later, and you for sure can do that. As a long time rower, I absolutely love the versatility of the oar board adventure unit. You can row it as a single, as a double, you can use it as an SUP. I've seen people using kayak paddles and canoe paddles on it. It's more than that, it's light enough and it's easy enough to transport that anyone can use it. It, it encourages uh, adventure and independence. Thank you very much for watching. I hope we answered all your questions today and we look forward to seeing you out on the water soon.